the Porsche 993 LSA axle explained. So we'll have a quick look at the Porsche design criteria for the 993, um, have a look at the design in detail and we'll uh, then look at how we tune and maintain uh, this suspension. The requirements for this, this axle from Porsche were that the rear axle should have the maximum stability or give the effect of maximum stability and safety but also be agile which are completely opposite ends of the spectrum. And this is how they did it. They did it with the introduction of the kinematic tub. Now kinematics is the study of the geometry of motion. So if I move this wheel up and down, the suspension guides the position of this wheel in space accurately. What Porsche had always been worried about is what the car would tend to do, what the 911 would tend to do if in a turn there was a lift off or a braking manoeuvre which would then upset the balance of the car and the car would tend to rotate into oversteer. So this axle was designed to counter the, uh, the possibility of lift off or braking in turn. So let's explore so the design and some of the terms that we might be using in the next few minutes. So here we have the rear left wheel station and we have uh, the toe of the rear wheel defined by this axis here. We have the camber of the rear wheel defined by this axis here and this is the inclination to the vertical and that's the camber. Zooming in, we have the suspension links in two planes. The upper plane is, are the two links. This is a four, five link um, suspension, so it's the top of the tree. Uh, five link multi-link suspension is used on less than 10% of all rear wheel driven cars. Um, so it's quite special because it's expensive um, and quite complicated. So the upper level is uh, afforded two links, um, which are links which are not are very stiff in compression and tension. And on the lower plane, we've got another further three links. So there's your five links, or multi-link. Special to the 993 is the lower link, defined by the green and orange there is actually a wishbone or an arm. At the inboard of these links there are bushes. These allow constrained amount of movement and are very stiff on the car. So we have bushes on the inner pivot location of this link uh, and the upper link here, here and, and here. On the outboard we have the wheel carrier which is the uh, grey rectangle. That's the wheel hub and that carries the wheel and connected to the wheel carrier are the links uh, uh, terminated by ball joints and you can see there we've got one, two, three and, and fourth ball joint down there. So, five links and their job is to manage the kinematics uh, which is the study of the motion of the geometry and uh, the kinematic toe is a term applied to the change of the toe which we saw just earlier is the attitude of the wheel to the straight ahead. So for example the toe on a typical car is defined by this line here and if this is the centre line of the car these two lines would meet uh, about 10 metres in front of the car and uh, we call this toe in. 
and it's tow in that is responsible for the stability of the uh, of the rear axle tow out would give an unstable axle which would then uh, swap ends on us in a turn in our model further in our model we have the subframe uh, which is the left hand side of the subframe that's uh, that's normally uh, aluminium and that's bolted to the car itself uh, with reinforced pickup points here and uh, at the forward end of the A arm which is a ball joint at the rear end of the arm A arm is something that I've improvised to give what's called a compliance bush which is this device down here it's behaving like a torsion bar um, which allows a, um, a force um, and torque to be able to bend the bar so if I just demonstrate that there you can see I can move that yellow point which is in the background in and out okay the design is, is such that when the car is going around the corner um, force will point in this direction through the contact patch and push the wheel so the links here need to be as stiff as possible laterally so you can see here as I push the wheel carrier the subframe is is bending because this is Technics these aluminium arms are die cast aluminium and uh, the subframe is um, is normally chill cast uh, aluminium let's just talk about degrees of freedom or in this case the wheel has six degrees of freedom um, but we need to manage and control that or five of those degrees of freedom and allow one degree of freedom which is uh, which is this one or control that that degree of freedom which is in bump and extension and we also have the freedom of the wheel to turn so in order to uh, manage the five degrees of freedom we need five links Porsche introduced the compliance bush here which is the uh, the Wegley bush that I showed you before to give an amount of compliance in that degree of freedom which which then falls into the kinematic toe explanation coming soon looking at the standard design criteria for a multi-link suspension you typically find that the upper links here are shorter than the lower links and um, you'll find that the arc um, described by the link and uh, the uh, a arm link there um, which is basically two links joined together um, into one so when i say five link two of them are included in the a arm there um, but uh, the idea is that um, the uh, the links all follow the same arc um, which gives, uh, a, gives a, a, a way of controlling the motion of the wheel carrier and then the wheel the, uh, there's something special quite about the about the design of the rear axle here because Porsche put a um, what we call anti-squat which is about 90% anti-squat um, facility into the rear axle if you look at the uh, the green and the orange link arms they are, are not on the same plane um, the green is the green pivot is slightly further up and that defines the anti-squat angle um, which basically means that when the car is on power and is squatting the control arms manage and take all of the force through the weight transfer the load transfer to the rear axle that means that the springs and the dampers don't um, this is quite high 90% typically cars have 70% or thereabouts so uh, really quite high anti-squat angle so let's have a look at the kinematics which is this study of uh, motion so if we 
study the wheel in the end elevation here uh, in compression and droop. That's compression and droop. So compression here when we're turning the right hand corner in the case of the rear left wheel. And we'll look at the kinematics in the top elevation here, or plan view. So if I were to uh, go through the bump and we concentrate looking at, you'll notice that the, the wheel, as I lift, toes in slightly. And if we look at the wheel camber, as we go through bump, it produces some positive camber. What does that mean? It means it pushes the wheel out at the top in readiness for the roll so that we, the contact patch here remains as flat as possible. Put the car through roll. So let's just see that. So we're, we're doing a pretend right turn and you can see here um, how what the the linkages do to the wheel to prepare it for going around a corner and there you go and then that's no roll and roll no roll and roll and as we roll also we get some toe in you see excellent so the Weissach effect with this axle is given by not the kinematic toe but by compliance in toe and the compliance that we referred to in the bush around the forward part of the or the rearward part of the a-arm so this is a soft rubber bushing designed to be soft and spongy whereas at the front of the a-arm we have the ball joint so I find the road here and I push the rear wheel inboard and we see from plan view what happens to our compliant bush. Hopefully we can see that there. So as I represent the road pushing the to the inboard of the car and the car pushing outboard, you can see I'm pushing at the contact patch and the wheel is tucking and the compliance bush is giving and if we look at the toe compared to our toe criteria before just at the contact patch you'll see that just pushing on the wheel there's no cheating just pushing on the wheel produces a toe in so as we turn in, the lateral force at the contact patch here produces a towing effect which is due to the compliance in that bush there.